Back live on the AM Report, I'm Ayan Banyati. More on those headline stories for you throughout the morning. For now, let's hone in on this. The Gender-Based Violence Monitor South Africa is a non-profit organization that seeks to create a South Africa that's free from gender-based violence. Its research component is designed to track and trace GBV cases through the criminal justice system. Executive Director Omoholo Daunyani Mguni joins us now via our video link to tell us a bit more about the work they do. Omoholo, great to see you and it's lovely to chat to you on this Thursday morning. Thanks very much indeed for making time. Uh, so part of what you say the organization wants to do is to challenge what you're calling the institutional inertia on gender-based violence cases and patriarchal dogma. What do you mean? Thank you for having me, Ayanda, and good day to your listeners. You know, when I talk about that specifically, what I am referring to is, you know, we all know that we are... In a, in a national crisis. Our country's in a crisis specifically with GBV. Um, every day, women, you know, children, men, you know, and people from LGBTQIA communities are being maimed, you know, and we know that this is happening every day. It doesn't just happen something, it's not something that happens only in women's mind. In, um, during Women's Month. Mm. So what I'm, what I'm bringing, you know, with this platform is a place where, you know, we can all see the story um, of GDV, um, the story of citizens. What is your experience going to be um, should you interact with the criminal justice system? Um, you know, it's the other aspect that I'm also tackling here is to really have a platform where we are reporting on GBV cases specifically. That is our work. And it is important that we highlight this um, because... You know, we can't leave all the work to the media to do that. We know how, you know, how, how you know, not as well resourced some media houses are. They don't always have the resources to follow every GBV case that is reported across the country. Absolutely. You also mentioned the fact that you track these gender-based violence cases. I wonder whether you can give us insight uh, into what you're actually finding, especially in a context where we've spoken so much, for instance, about the systemic backlogs in DNA um, processes in some of our state institutions? You know, it's been interesting um, since I started tracking these cases. I have about 84 cases that are already uploaded on our tracker. And it, it gives us a different perspective. It's a different nuance that we now get to have about what, where, are the, where are the opportunities, the missed opportunities mm -hmm. in GBV. Um, you know, you can pick up, for instance, you know, the location where this incident has happened. You can follow where, which sets office this case was reported it gives you details about you know whether an arrest has been effected how much bail was granted for an accused um you know uh, what what else can i can i think on top of my head you can look at the presiding officer you can say judge omukulu donya ninguni is presiding over this case what is judge ninguni's response to the kind of verdicts that um, they implement with GBV cases. Do they throw cases out? Um, do they issue fines? Do they get minimum or maximum sentences? So that's part of what that tracker can do. It really gives something very different to what we already have um, in our public discourse about GBV and how it's reported. It's fascinating stuff. Are you looking into possibly the relationship that sometimes perpetrators have with their victims? Uh, on the face of it, that might also perhaps in some instances actually make a whole lot more people fearful about the lives we're living. But I imagine there's a lot to be said around the conditions sometimes that people find themselves in when they are are victimized? You know, um, when we speak about the relationship that perpetrators have with survivors, I don't call them victims, I call mm. them survivors, we know that in most cases these incidents are happening, you know, 
that are being perpetrated by people who are known to the survivors. We know that these incidents are happening in private spaces of survivors. You know, that already tells you that when we're talking about a rapist, a murderer, um, you know, a, a, a woman beater, we are talking about someone who is right next door. We're talking about someone who is part of the community. These are, you know, men, because, you know, most cases, these are men who perpetrate these crimes. But we know that these are well-respected men, men who are loved by their communities, men who come home and show, you know, appreciation and kindness to those who are closest to them. So there really is something to be said about this kind of brutality and violence um, by people who are known to the victim. It's really concerning. And this is exactly what we are trying to look at, you know, through the monitor to see how best, you know, can we step in and intervene um, with the data that we are going to be collecting. So help us answer that question. Where do you reckon the data lies? I mean, where do you reckon the gap lies? What does your data tell you? The gap lies, according to GBV Monitor SA, um, it lies with um, an urban bias. Um, you know, I'll give an example with, you know, Garabo Mugwena or Tsepofat or Bule. It was very easy at the time for the media to follow these cases closely and give us updates regularly as and when they were happening. Because these women lived in Gauteng, in Johannesburg. You know, there's a huge concentration of media houses who can easily allocate resources to those kind of cases. Where GBV Monitor comes in is that we really do have a rural bias to the kind of data we are collecting, to the people behind these incidents, the, the survivors of these crimes. We want to know what is happening to Omoholo, who is from a rural town in Tabanchu, 60 kilometers from Bloemfontein. What happens to her when she approaches the police station to say, this has been my experience. How can you help me? We know that, you know, our, um, our police stations in rural areas are not always easily accessible. We know that they are not always as well resourced as they should be. And um, we know that, for instance, some police stations don't even have rape kits. That is already a problem. And where we come in is to say, what is it that we can do to one? hold government accountable to the promises that it has made to us to say we want to create an equal and a just society for all. That encompasses make, making sure that our police stations are well equipped with the rape kits. And if they are not, our police officials trained to say, Omoholo, we do not have a rape kit right now, but we can direct you to the nearest hospital where you will be given a J88 form to fill out and then have a document to use as proof should you want to lay a case. We shouldn't be in a situation where victims come forward and they have a, you know, negative and traumatizing experience with our law enforcement officers. We shouldn't have victims coming forward and being second-guessed by our society because it is predominantly patriarchal. We shouldn't be in a situation where victims come forward and they are rejected or ridiculed by our own law enforcement enforcement officers. So this is really an accountability platform, you know. Um, we give regular information. Um, we collect some of our data from the National Prosecuting Authority. I mean, the NPA has been very helpful in, you know, highlighting the cases that are being reported in some of our, you know, far-flung places in the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, the rural areas where we are most interested in. Yeah, the issue around reporting cases is a major one because there's real fears that even the cases we know of are all but the tip of the iceberg. And that leads me to my final question to you. If people want to help you collate more data, how do they do that? So um, we have our email address that is available on our website, www.gbvmonitorsa.co.za. And we have a contact page where they can leave their details there and we can, you know, interact. They can also drop me an email at info at info at gbvmonitorsa.co.za. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Important work that you're doing.
one can only hope that you receive the support that you need. For now, let me thank you for your discussion with us. Omokolo is the Executive Director of GBV Monitor South Africa. It's a non-profit that's looking at the very least to track and trace some of the GBV cases in our country with the hopes that this will lead to some kind of meaningful reform in some respects. Once again, thanks very much indeed.